Guthrie is a familiar name to all. Most would say too familiar because it's identified with only one thing, recurring rioting. But having said that, most people probably don't know very much else about it. In fact, it's a corporation estate of just over 650 houses tucked inside the angle of the White Rock and the Springfield Roads in West Belfast. Set against a pastoral background, the lower slopes of the Black Mountain are only a couple of stone throws away. When first conceived, Bally Murphy was to have been an area of greenery, of trees and shrubs with 350 houses in a pleasantly laid out estate, the concept in the planner's minds, a worker's paradise. But when they got down to it, that wasn't to be the case. The chronic housing shortage after the war ensured that. More than 650 houses were erected in an area planned for 350. Few other facilities were provided other than a row of shops. True, as originally conceived, Protestants and Catholics lived together. But that didn't last long. Now, just 20 years to the day when the first resident moved in, Bally Murphy is an estate in decay. Five and a half thousand people are, that's more than eight to every home. It's hard not to be aware of violence when one spends some time here. During our fortnight stay, there were several nights of vicious rioting against British troops, not all of them incidentally reported. In addition, a 14-year-old boy had his hand blown off by a gelignite bomb, and behind me here in Bally Murphy, a youth was shot through the neck. This apparently through the dispute between the provisional wing of the IRA, which undoubtedly has influence in the estate, and the less strong traditional wing of the movement. All this, not surprisingly, led to a perceptible increase in tension and either directly or indirectly to an, an anonymous phone call to the BBC warning us not to keep a certain date in this area at a certain time or else. But to the casual visitor to the estate, the most obvious violence is in fact not against people, but against property. Well, here I am from Northern Ireland, alone a heronet. A lovely act. I broke a heart, so all the girls from me, some Belfast town. Good man, Paddy. And when they hear them away, there is a hullabaloo. Here's the paper, folks. They hear the bird, that handsome fella, called O'Donoghue. Beautiful. For I'm a fella the place, sir. Aye. Vandalized, neglected. When one goes into Bally Murphy at ground level, the evidence is stark. Glass litters the road from broken milk bottles. Gardens are often little more than mud pits. Fences are broken and twisted. It clearly just isn't a pleasant place to live. What's gone wrong in the comparatively short life of the estate? Why the obvious lack of morale among the people? Many point to unemployment and the figure much used by politicians that 47% of the fathers in Bally Murphy are out of work. That's one in every two. Teacher has carried out his own survey as part of a school project. So that figure of 47%, it seems incredibly high. Can it really be justified? Yes, this was the finding which came out of a survey which was carried out in the school. We asked the boys in the school if their father was employed, unemployed or dead and we covered 212 houses out of a total of about six and a half hundred in Valley Murphy. We found out that there were 95 unemployed, 106 unemployed and 11 dead. This gives us a figure of unemployment of 47.2%. So let's get this right, that's 47.2% of heads of household? Heads of household, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, what about the wider situation of men in the estate? Now, if we take it that these boys have older brothers, we find out that out of a total of 246, we had another 35 men unemployed. This reduces the overall figure to 34% unemployed on the state of the male adult population. Is there any work in Bally Murphy itself or the area? There is no work in Bally Murphy itself or the immediate area. The nearest large employer would be uh, a large engineering firm, which is not well known for taking on the type of people who have the religion that the Bally Murphy people in the main have. There is little evidence of professional malingering but clearly, as in other areas, there must be at least some men who out of work for several years and receiving benefit of up to £16 a week for their large families simply lose the will to work. Visiting homes in the estate, the figure of 34% unemployed seems accurate enough. 
The figure will include those who are sick and those who just don't want to work. The problem of unemployment, however, is a major one. Even in the household where the father has a job. Say there are nine children, what are the employment? Very poor. As you know yourself, the name that Bally Murphy has now. I wouldn't like to be a young person going and asking for a job. They think we're, we're animals up here. You have been up here, you've met people, have you saw any animals? What about the problem of vandalism? There seems to be, looking around the street, a great deal of it. Well, she'll get vandalism everywhere. You'll get vandalism anywhere in Belfast. The streets, the corporation has no interest in Bally Murphy. They don't want to do anything in Bally Murphy. Not only now. I'm 16 years here and they never wanted to do anything in Bally Murphy. And at the moment now, Bally Murphy is in the limelight. They won't give us peace in Bally Murphy. There was an article in the paper a fortnight ago which said that Bally Murphy was a zoo. I have nine children. There's no monkeys nor no elephants in my family. And these persons, it's running Bally Murphy down. Why don't they come into Bally Murphy and meet the people? We're not animals. I wouldn't leave Bally Murphy. I have good neighbours, both Protestant and Catholic. Good neighbours, Protestant and Catholic together. Once the estate was split 50-50 with the orange men from Bally Murphy marching off proudly on the 12th of July. Today, there are just 14 Protestant families left, living amicably with their Catholic neighbours. But if the people of Bally Murphy get on so well together, why are they so out of tune with their environment? Why, to take just one instance, the almost permanent covering of glass on the roads, a constant hazard to car tyres. Causing this, that's the big question. Well, I would like to say here and now that it's the very, very small vice, wee vice that has absolutely no sense. They'll pick up a milk bottle and throw it out on the middle of the road, it'll break and that's it. A lot of people think it's done by hooligans. Well, the elderly vice of Bally Murphy, which is not so. At the present time, I don't think there's any such thing as hooligans in Ballymurphy. I mean, at first sight, it would seem that there's a lot of vandalism. I mean, broken down fences, gardens, um, many gardens uncared for. This all seems to smack of vandalism. Well, this trouble hasn't just started now. The, uh, the gardens, let's go back to when the estate uh, first originated, when the houses were built, or should I say, thrown up. Because what you can see of the houses in Ballymurphy, there has been no planning whatsoever. It just looks like some man came to the end of the street and he said, right, put a row of houses up there, put a row of houses up there. The houses, as you can see, are built uh, back to face. If I look out that window there, or if you look out that window there, you're looking into the back window of the house opposite. If they look out their front window, they are looking into a very that old patch of a garden which is on a slope where the water runs down into the front of the houses during the winter time. Take the gardens for instance. The gardens are too big. When the gardens were first built, there was too easy access for children. I mean, one piece of wire stretched along doesn't keep children out of gardens. And so let's be honest about it, children will be children. Let me take you back to an original point. You were talking about lack of amenities in the area, obviously you mean sort of basically things for children to do. Do you think the church has done enough in this matter? Definitely not. The church definitely hasn't done enough in this matter. What, what we lack now, we'll go back to the very small children, what we lack here and what we have lacked since the estate was built was a playground for the children. Let's be honest about this, the children from the time they came to the use of reason has got off on a wrong foot. Let me interrupt you though, in fact there's a lovely £160,000 church less than 100 yards away from here. Yes. Uh, do you think that possibly some of that money might have been used for other things? Yes, I definitely think that some of this money could have been put to better means. For instance, we, it is a very expensive church and, if I may say so, it is a credit to the people of Ballymurphy. But with so much unemployment in the, in the estate at the present time, I think the money could be used to a much better purpose. For instance, you could have built a much cheaper church, quite as big, all the same amount of people. You could have built a parochial hall, different things, different accommodation for the same amount of money. The new church of Corpus Christi, built at a cost of just under £200,000. Indeed, a credit to the people of the area. 
many of whom have been contributing to its building fund for the past 17 years. Since its opening on the fringes of the estate late last year, ties between the church and the people of Ballymurphy, slackening of late, especially among the men and boys, have been strengthened. But if the people of Ballymurphy have been giving to the church, what is it to try and help solve their problems? Well, the church, the presence of the church here has been, I'm afraid, not as great as it could have been. You have individual uh, Catholic priests and others working very hard here. But until we had this church in the area, there was, the work was terribly limited and terribly confined. I honestly believe that in this area now, we would need to have a policy, a whole program of experiment, and very courageous experiment, trying all kinds of new things and spectacular things, if you like, in, in order to, to, solve our, our, to, to get the church to solve the problems. Now, whether we're going to be able to do this or not remains to be seen, I don't know. But I do know that in other countries, we, we've had the same problem. Now, we're standing outside here a very beautiful church that cost several hundred thousand pounds. In fact, there's no parish hall. There's nowhere for the children or indeed their parents to go for recreation. Here again, you have one of the big basic difficulties of, of, of the, the, the church in any community. Are you going to provide a, a big building where people can come together and do all kinds of things, have meetings, enjoy themselves, and uh, at, on Sunday they're going to have uh, worship there, and all the time a tiny little area which is a sanctuary area. I personally believe that this is the solution and this is what should be done. Yeah. But obviously the solution, <laughs> these uh, questions are not solved by people like me. And uh, uh, it breaks my heart to think that you, you, you have the solutions, we have the solutions in our hands. Yeah. So but you're we, saying this building should be able to be used for other things, that should have been the original concept? Uh, the original concept certainly should have been that, yes, without a doubt. Now, what about the future of Bally Murphy Father? You suggested earlier that the people must be given something to look to or something mm -hmm. to work for. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is the answer? What should be done immediately? Well, here, uh, I would think that uh, all the, a lot of the things that are being done already, of course, have the seeds of the answer. We have seen over the last three or four years an organisation building up, you know, tenants, associations, credit unions and the rest, which is very heartening indeed. And I think this is the basis of the solution. But on the other hand, you, you, need, you need just one great big factory somewhere. Now, again, you see, as far as the church is concerned, I would have thought that here we have a church which is a worldwide organization. We have people uh, in, in West Germany, we have people in France and Italy and all over the world. Now, I would like to think that the whole resources of the church and all these connections that we have would be used to force work, into, uh, to work opportunity into, into this area. What the church has done and could be doing. The only other new building in Ballymurphy reflects the efforts of some of the people themselves. The new community centre just across the White Rock Road from the estate cost £18,000. Staffed by a full-time youth leader with experience in the deprived areas of London and Liverpool, it too, like nearly everywhere else, is a target for the casual. Ms McCarthy, as an outsider having come in here to work in the area, how have you found the Ballymurphy boy or girl? My impression is that um, as compared with a similar estate in England. They are um, considerably higher caliber. My own feeling is that uh, the lack of job opportunity, both for themselves and for the, their parents, retains on the estate the sort of people who in England would move off to the more clash mm -hmm. areas. They are very, definitely very much more articulate, sharp. Their reactions are quicker, fiercer than you would normally expect. Why is this, do you think? Basically, as I said, because I think the, the lack of job opportunity, the fact that uh, they uh, can't get jobs up to their capacities. Um, I have lads here who I'm darn sure in England would be getting, doing further education, probably up to university standards, certainly College of Advanced Technology, or colleges of further education. Here they're bookies runners and dispatch clerks when they're not unemployed altogether. Mm. And we have a 47% unemployment on the estate. So even when they have jobs, the chances are they'll only have them until they're 18, until somebody cheaper can be employed. Well, is it possible in fact that you see them at their liveliest before disillusionment sets in? Very probably so. I think probably if you go to see them standing outside Kelly's bar a few years from now, they will be much less lively. This community centre caters for 350 children each evening, but there are between 3,000 and 4,000 children and young people in Bally Murphy. The centre is the end product of eight years' work for the local tenants' association. It took them that time to raise £10,000. 
But late last week, good news. The Ministry of Community Relations are going to pay off the balance of £8,000 and the Ministry of Education is looking at an expansion scheme costing £40,000. But again, members of the Tenants Association, many of them out of work, will have to find several thousand pounds of this. Facilities for the very small children are even more limited. The brightly lit preschool playgroup run by the Corporation Welfare Department can cope with 40 children a day, but there are over 500 children in Ballymurphy under the age of five, a number of them in problem families. So the community centre and the preschool playgroup, able to cater for just some of the children, some of the time. But clearly, with virtually no other facilities in the area, an extra burden must fall on the schools. The local secondary school headmaster sees Bally Murphy people as the salt of the earth. The boys come in from humble but happy homes and comparable with boys from other areas. I've often heard people talking about the Bally Murphy boys being hooligans, and it's often annoyed me very much. To these people, I always ask the question, what is a hooligan, or what makes a hooligan? These people, if they'd imagine what it is to live the day and the life of a hooligan. These people are all unemployed. In the morning they get up, no incentive to get up. They have a long day in front of them, no money in their pocket, nothing to do, and that goes on day in and day out, week in and week out, month in and month out, and year after year. Naturally then the frustration builds up. And these people can only show their dignity in one way, and that's the way in which they're showing it. Well, in fact, all the Bally Murphy boys come to you at some stage or another for their education, but how many, in fact, are going to leave you to, the sort of, to go to the sort of life that you've just talked about? How many are going to become unemployed? Well, now, first of all, the school, as I told you, is adequately equipped and staffed right. to, have, to cater for all examinations, junior, O-level and A-level GC. And although I don't want to blow the school's trumpet, may I be permitted to give you last year's results as a sample of the quality of boys who attend this school. Last year we had 440 subject passes in junior, 249 in O-level, and 69 in A-level. Our A-level boys usually go to the university, or the training college, or enter the bank, or the civil service, or the professions. And again, I must say, and I must stress it, that the Billy Murphy boys have successes. But unfortunately, and here I do want to decry the examination complex, unfortunately there are many boys in the schools, in the school who leave without doing any examinations. This is, is the common feature of all secondary schools, that boys do not reach examination standard, they get a good general education and leave without any examination qualifications. So, lessons for the future in school, but there's also lessons to be learned in the streets. Time after time, one sees even the very small children compulsively picking up stones, maybe to throw after a passing army vehicle, or just as likely to throw at any object that meets their eye, a lamppost, a gatepost, or even themselves. Inevitably, one feels trouble being stored up for the future. But should, in fact, the parents of Bally Murphy be blamed for the rioting, stone throwing of their children? Well, I think mostly that if the parents would look after the children and uh, get obedience from them and keep them in when the riots are going on, that means a terrific lot. And if you let your child go out and you're not caring where it goes to them, that eventually it will get into danger or harm or, and among the rest of the mobs. But you, you have to keep them in. Are you therefore saying in the fact that the trouble in Bally Murphy can really be put at the door of the parents who don't look after the children? I wouldn't put it all at the door of the parents because I think that in the beginning if there had been proper facilities here for the children to go out in the evening and play playgrounds and that sort of thing they would have been kept out of mischief. Whereas they hadn't any of that, and of course, well, when you have nothing to do when you're young, you'll always find some mischief to be at. Mr. McCurdy, uh, the whole question of vandalism, there appears a great deal of vandalism in the estate. Now, why is this? Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> I suppose an old saying is idle hands are sinful hands. I, I think that if you give people something to do and something to interest them in, uh, not just uh, there must there must be come important citizens, and to build an important person, you've got to start at the foundation. Like, vandalism is destruction, but uh, is it not carried out too far to the such an extent that is 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 we'll put it to you is a corporation 
and are the men that design Ballymurphy not greater vandals than the ones that destroy Ballymurphy? Ballymurphy retains many links with old Belfast, but such is its name today that many people looking for a corporation house simply don't want to go there. The estate probably, therefore, ends up with more than its share of problem families. Conditions in many of the homes are in marked contrast to that of the streets. Still, has the quality of home life anything to do with the rioting? I don't think the parents are to blame. The parents in Valley Murphy are doing their best against all the odds in the world. I actually blame the corporation for the slum-like conditions here and everything else. People are good, decent, down-to-earth people that try to rear their family to the best of their abilities. Good Christian people, actually. But the corporation are not pulling their weight. I mean, is it all the corporation's fault? I mean, could the residents of Bally Murphy not do a wee bit themselves to try and keep the place looking? Well, they better? probably could do a bit and help fix up the gardens a bit, but the corporation's an awful lot to blame. Mm -hmm. Even as regards doing repairs, very, very hard to get them. And they're charging, isn't it, this house here, £3.8 a week. They're keeping you living in a slum, actually. They're making it a slum and charging you Malone Road prices nearly for it. So, Bally Murphy, a high-rent slum, and the city fathers, the villains of the peace. That's certainly the way the residents see it. They claim they've been neglected by the corporation. Would the high sheriff, who's chairman of the Estates Committee, agree? Well, I wouldn't agree with you there at all, nor would I agree with the residents. Uh, I think that the Belfast Corporation uh, could honestly say that Bally Murphy Estate has had more consideration and more help than any of our other estates. Now, take, for instance, uh, we have cleansing. There is a permanent staff of fa five men there all the time who are brushing the streets every day in the week. But you must remember also that Billy Murphy was housed with a, a, a lot of newly married people. At the present moment there are 4,000 children uh, in 650 houses. Uh, street lighting was broken repeatedly. The police committee decided that they would not replace them. Eventually, they did replace them uh, with the result that they are now completely broken again. So that is not the responsibility of the Belfast Corporation. That is a responsibility of a minority group who are trying to disrupt the harmony which could exist in Belly Murphy. And I'd like to state here and now, Mr. Harris, that we have in Belly Murphy some very responsible people who are very distressed about the uh, the vandalism and the destruction in the estate by a small minority of troublemakers. Dealing with this criticism of the state of the roads, uh, you claim they're cleaned every day, but in fact uh, they seem to be permanently littered with glass, with other debris, even with the hulks of burnt out cars. Well, uh, Mr. Harris, I think you'd probably be inclined to agree with me that people make an estate. And as I have said to you, that there are masses of children there. That's, that's the business of the people concerned. It's not our affair. But we have done everything in our power uh, to keep the estate clean. I have repeatedly, repeatedly uh, visited Bally Murphy. I've gone through with my car with fear and trembling because I agree with you that glass is littered and broken all over the place. Nevertheless, it's clean today and it's just as bad tomorrow. Many residents complain that the estate was badly conceived in the first place, that some of the houses are back to front, that the gardens can't be cultivated. How do you answer that? Well, um, as far as the gardens are concerned, uh, when the estate was opened uh, at first, about 1955, many people had pride in their gardens, and they had very good gardens. But then the flowers were being pulled out, the plants were being pulled out, they were thrown away. So the people just give up the fight and they couldn't care less. And, and this is one of the problems. Um, again, uh, to come back to what the corporation think of Valley Murphy Estate, we think so highly of it that we even put a repair yard there. That repair yard has now been, been completely burnt out. Thousands of pounds worth of material lost. And we don't intend to replace it. You said earlier there were 4,000 children in Valley Murphy, yet there seem to be no facilities for them at all. Now surely you should be doing something about this. Well, we did lease um, a ground for a community centre in Valley Murphy, uh, but it hasn't helped vandalism. And if we had originally built a, a play centre or a built a, a community centre, would it have made any difference? 
You say the residents can do something about the situation there, but have the corporation got any plans? I mean, surely they should be thinking about something. Well, at the present moment, uh, the planning officer is, is preparing a landscaping scheme to, pre to present to the ministry. But uh, I suppose if you talk about landscaping at the moment, it would be a joke. But nevertheless, there is a, a plan being prepared. And as I said, we are, we are always willing, we are always willing to do everything in our power to help the people in the estate if they will try and help us. I it's see. a two-way gesture. Belfast Corporation and the people of Ballymurphy must get together to create a new environment. All the problems must be clearly known so that vandalism on this scale can go out the window. So the Tennis Association have invited the Social Studies Department at Queen's University to carry out an extensive survey of the estate. One thing to be looked at, the age structure. Uh, my estimate is that in the very important age group, 15 to 24, there may well be as many as 1,900, which is one and a half times as many people as I reckon there are aged 40 and over. So there's a very serious imbalance between the uh, uh, youngsters, as it were, and the greybeards in the community. And I suspect that this is one of the reasons why they've had a, a great deal of trouble, um, uh, you know, with uh, trouble on the streets, uh, uh, fighting and so forth. How much attention will you pay to the whole question of unemployment? I think that's a, a appallingly serious problem. A recent survey done by a very competent man uh, suggests that getting on for half of the heads of households are out of a job at the moment. And uh, frankly, what, what terrifies me and distresses me is the appalling human waste on the uh, Bally Murphy estate. So the people of Bally Murphy, sinners or the sinned against? They live in what, after only 20 years, can be described as a modern slum. But who's to blame for that? The people themselves or bodies like Belfast Corporation? Well, that's one for you side. But clearly, and no matter who's to blame, something must be done about conditions here. And indeed, the seeds have been sown. The new community centre erected by the Tennis Association. The survey being carried out by the Queen's academics and at least the prospect of a facelift for the whole area. But when it comes to it, the future of Barry Murphy must rest ultimately in the hands of its young people. And it's to those young people that we leave the last word. We want something done for Barry Murphy. Everybody says, why don't you do it yourself? And, uh, but the people here are so depressed. They've been depressed for so long. It's very hard to crawl from the bottom. And the people in Barry Murphy are real, really on the bottom socially. And it's desperate hard to crawl, you know, try and drag yourself up. And we need help. And it's a corporation and the government which has to help us, we really need it. Well, I am a fellow to please you, I am a fellow to squeeze you, I am a fellow to please her. I will tell you what I will do. I will court her like an Indian man with my turban, like all I can, my hulking, 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 sahabo, dana,